Hi peeps, welcome back to Mental Health Naps. My name is Kaisa, and this is where we talk about mental health, sleep apnea, and my musings, mwahaha, through smiles, not tears. And we do this by focusing in on one word and its definition, or maybe inspired me about something, you know, you never know. So the word of the day is actually jars. Like you have a jar sitting on your counter for cookies, maybe in the kitchen. If you notice this photo, you see these very neat glass jars. And these are jars that are on my aunt's counter. You'll notice two of them have cookies, chocolate chip cookies and ginger snaps or molasses cookies. And then I think the other one is granola and then the other one is biscuits, I wanna say. But anyway, when I was in Sweden, cause that's where half of my family is at, I was super excited to to participate in fika. I'm gonna teach you a little bit of Swedish. So fika means coffee break and it's a little coffee break between meals. You can have a friend over but you just have your little cup of coffee and you have some little pastry or a little goodie to go along with it. And I love fika and I always get super super excited to eat my favorite baked goods when I go over there. Personally, I love to bake. I have baked for a very long time. I wouldn't say I'm a master but I like to know how to bake specific things. So when I went over there, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to eat all of these Swedish pastries and, you know, figure out how they make them and all of these things. And my family, they're like, ugh. Swedish desserts, pastries, how boring. Can you please make us some American things? I was like, hold up a second. I didn't come to be the fika. I came to eat the fika. Alas, I ended up making chocolate chip cookies, molasses cookies, ginger snap cookies, whatever you want to call them, a spice cake and a coffee cake. I think it's safe to say that once I left to return back home to the States, my family was very sugared out because Swedish desserts and pastries, they tend to be lighter. Whereas American desserts, they tend to stick to your ribs and they're way, way sweeter. Anyway, back to the jar thing. I put my cookies that I made away in these jars. I filled the one up with chocolate chip cookies and I filled the other one up with the molasses ginger snap cookies. I was kind of just struck by this whole thought process, the different jars that we have in life, what that could mean for our mental health. And it's like this whole analogy was like born in my head. So it's like, like you have these jars in your mental kitchen counter and throughout your life you're gonna put particular things in these jars these are your focuses these are your priorities I think throughout our lives as we go along we have more jars or we have less jars or whatever and I was thinking about what my jars were like when I was really mentally ill with depression and anxiety it felt like I had too many jars with not a lot of stuff in it so it was very crippling and overwhelming to look at these jars and be like, I don't have the energy to fill these jars up with what is important to me because I can't even like take care of myself. A big reason for me not being able to keep my jars full was the sleep apnea, which was discovered a little bit later. Funny thing, you need oxygen to have good mental health, right? I was thinking about what different kind of jars I've had in my life and how they've swapped out. I definitely think that when I was going through school, school was a jar. That was important to me. That was something I was willing to put ahead of other things. My family and friends, they've always had a jar. I think they've been separate jars at times, but I think for the most part, it's it's one jar. As I've worked on my mental health and as I've worked on my physical health and trying to get myself to a place where I'm comfortable so I can function, I think one of my jars has become health and taking that more seriously and taking care of myself more seriously. So it's just this interesting concept of what are you filling your jars with and is it positive things? Are they things that are going to help you be happy? I think if we focus too much on one jar, we kind of feel this imbalance and it's like if I focus too much on like let's say my mental health naps jar then all of a sudden the other jars are kind of left neglected a little bit the goodness in there if you have cookies or whatever in there they stale they go bad I think it's kind of one of those things that it's important that we you know we do the self-care we keep our jars full we keep those jars fresh and we make sure that you know we're taking time to focus on the different jars that are important to us another part of this analogy that I I thought of was how many of you have stolen cookies from a cookie jar? 
I know we all have at some point. You know, I think when we come across people in our life, sometimes they take too much from our jars. So like say maybe a friend or a family member takes too much from that family friend jar, which makes it so you can't focus on the other jars in your life. I don't want to say it's like greedy handfuls, but it's like, where are you spending your energy? Is that particular person worth spending that energy for? Is it good for your mental health? Is it good for your physical health? And I think it's important to be choosy about who we let have access to our jars. Just something else to think about. Regardless, when it comes to your jars, I really challenge you to sit down and think, what jars do I have? What jars do I wish I had? How can I make it so I can have a particular jar? What in my life needs more balance so I can have these jars be more full or more positive or whatnot? I think when we start breaking it down like that, I think it's a really interesting mental health exercise to kind of keep yourself in check. Where are you? I think life is about balance and I think a lot of times when you live out of balance, especially when it comes to your mental health, that's when you can get yourself in trouble and that's when you can start getting in the negative in some of these jars. So when you look at them, you feel the guilt, you feel the embarrassment, you feel the shame that that particular jar on your counter is being ignored, that it's empty. I just think it's important that we stay on top of which jars are important in our lives to keep full. Anyway, I have this particular jar. He's a T-Rex. I know, he's pretty fantastic. He doesn't hold cookies though, he holds other things. But keep your jars in mind. What jars do you have? What do they look like? It's all up to you. That's all I have to say about jars today. I hope you have a wonderful day and until the next one, have a nice nap.